through what life was like for you growing up? Oh, life for me when I was growing up was a bit of a mad one, really. Um, my mum was a bit of a nomad. She never stayed in one location. So I was born here in the UK, Westminster Hospital. But um, a few months after I was born, my dad unfortunately ended up going to jail, you know, hard times and got to provide for a baby. <coughs> so led to deeper measures. So my mum, once he's gone to jail, my mum took me to America, Brooklyn, New York first. Lexington Avenue between Nostrad and Bedford, yo, to the New York Massive. Um, so yeah, that was a bit of a journey, experienced quite a lot. Um, sad moment now, I lost my best friend at seven years old, Pierre, and then six months after that, I lost my second best friend, Malcolm, um, just after my eighth birthday. So um, yeah, I faced a bit of experience over there. Um, once another good friend of mine, Ella Rett, moved due to, you know, crime and violence in America. As everyone knows, it was an all-time high over there. Um, my mum moved to New Jersey. So I went to East Orange, New Jersey, St. Franklin School. Um, Whitney Houston went to that school, met her a couple of times. <laughs> so that was a good experience. And um, moved from Irving, um, East Orange, New Jersey to Irving, New Jersey, which we stayed for a couple of years. Um, and then I witnessed something that I don't think anybody should witness, which was um, one of the New Jersey police officers shot a black guy right on on my doorstep with his with his shotgun, and um, right outside my bedroom window on a Saturday when I was watching cartoons, and one came running down the stairs. It was a bit of a mad one. So um, yeah, I think from then. You know, my mum fell pregnant and then with my sister and we flew back over to England and we've been in the UK since. School was a bit of a mad one, you know what I mean? Um, all boys school, Archbishop Tennyson's. A um, few bit of verbal bu bullying, but nothing in a physical format. You know, they used to call me monkey man because they, they assumed that I looked like a monkey. It's grown gorilla now, you know what I mean? So I'm ready to pound like King Kong. Um, but anyway... Um, bit of a tyrant, always a rebel, uh, didn't really like the academic system, I wasn't really an academic learner, so it led me to get into trouble on the streets, um, on the streets I found like friends or some, some friends and some so-called friends if you get what I mean, um, got into a mad trouble, met my dad at the age of 13, by the age of 14 my dad put me on the strip. So that was another experience which I won't go into, but I overcame it and came out. Um, had my child young, so yeah, it was a bit of a journey, Kyra. Had her at 17, two weeks before my 18th birthday, so she was my 18th birthday present. Um, and then yeah, kind of repeated the cycle like my mum, became a young father, a young parent, dedicated to my children. Um, misfortunes happen when me and the mother didn't stay together and um yeah you know access between the children was a bit of a case but yeah it was a bit of, of a hectic wild unstable life nothing was stable if you get what i mean so yeah it was a I, if i was to put run it up into a hole it was unstable an unstable life style that i had an upbringing so where would you say your creative influences come from? My creative influences was my actual escape. So when I was young, I was very much an artistic person. Um, I was very much into comics, cartoons and things. So I used to make my own cartoon, I mean comics, and write my own comics when I was young. I was very much into writing my own poetry. Um, and then I discovered music. I discovered music from, well, do you know what? If I reverse it, I discovered music before I discovered anything else, but in the point of to listen to and enjoy, not to write to as yet. The, the comics and the poems came second. Um, and then I went into music writing, writing, writing my own songs and stuff like that. So my creative influences is my way of escaping the world which I was in. What sort of music did you listen to? When I was younger, oh no. When you was younger. When I was younger, I listened to a lot. Well, my mum influenced a lot of music. 
genres towards me and my stepfather did as well, Cassandra's dad, um, which was practically the main um, consistent man, father figure in my, in my life at that time. Uh, so I, lo- I listened to a lot of co- country and wrestling, I listened to a lot of reggae, bashment, um, but my music was R&B, hip hop at the time due to the American influences that I had. Um, as far as my creative learning, a lot of it was self-taught. A lot of it I had to teach myself. There wasn't no YouTube back then, so I couldn't, couldn't just log on online and get and just get, you know, get to know and all that. But yeah, so um, a lot of it was self-taught. I got kicked out of year nine because I punched my art teacher in the face. He, he told me. But anyway, I don't want to get into that. But yeah, I wasn't able to take art for an option because of that. Um, and uh, drama, I wasn't allowed to do any of my creative subjects not as a GCSE, but I was, I was allowed to do um, GCSE history and GCSE geography. So because I was good at it, I took it. So like, again, everything was self-taught. Um, music was just about being around other musicians and learning the craft, do you know what I mean? Listening to songs and seeing how they put their songs together and how they write their songs and everything like that. So, um, yeah, a lot of it was self-taught, a lot of it. Until I went back to uni in my later age, which was only a couple of years ago, which where I gra- graduated in um, film and documentary making. Um, so I actually honed in on a artistic craft. Do you get what I mean? So, um, yeah. When was the moment you became Jar Red? And what does Jar Red mean to you? The moment I became Jar Red is a funny one, actually. Um, my nickname was actually Troubler, given to me by, you know, the people that were, I was surrounded by. Because trouble used, I used to get into trouble when I was young. Like I said, I wasn't always a good boy. But it was all a learning curve. But, and it led to Troubler Jar Reds. And the reason it went to Troubler Jar Reds is because that time we was in Barbados, a few of the rest of men out there said, nah, man, you, ain't no, you is no Troubler, you is a Jar Reds. You get me? Because actually it was Troubler Reds. Because my eyes were always red. And that's where the Reds came from. And then the, the, um, the Rastas in Barbados... They um, gave me the name, they added the jar, dropped the troubler and said from now on we're going to call you Jar Reds and I kind of liked it, I liked the twang of it and then when you look up to the meaning of it, it's like a cross meaning because obviously red stands for danger, it stands for passion, it stands for um, you know strength, it's a very powerful colour um, and the jar, well that's self explanatory, you know what I mean? It's the name of the Most High, the Creator. It's another or another name for the Most High and the Creator. So I attached myself to that name and, yeah, used it ever since. Buried the Troubler and arisen the Jarreds. And then the Phoenix was born. Given everything that you've experienced, mm-hmm. what led you to turn your company into a community interest organisation? All right, we was a limited company first called Free Souls Productions. Then I was doing it for profit. But um, after I got qualified, I thought I want to work for myself because I was tired for working for people. Um, given saying that, I, I come from a background of behave, behavioural management or pastoral care. So that was working on offsite provisions or pupil referral units. Uh, I worked for YMCA Skills Academy. I worked for Communities Link Services, uh, which is more of a key support role. I also was um, pastoral manager at um, Westminster Academy and I was ahead of year at Open Community School. Um, Given that, uh, so that's 10 years in and out of the um, behavioral field, behavioral management field, pastoral care field. And given that, I've always worked with youth. Also, I, I used to teach martial arts with GKR and I used to connect with young people whilst teaching martial arts as well. So I've always had that connection with young people. Um, Given my experience, which I've endured as growing up, I thought it would be, for me, in my heart, I thought it would be good to be a mentor to these young people because when I was growing up, 
I didn't really have a mentor. I didn't really have the father figure. My mum, my, me and my mother's communication levels wasn't really there at that point because we didn't understand each other at that point. Um, she done her best raising me. My nan is more my mother than my mother is my mother, if that makes sense. Um, due to my mum having to work late nights or, and go to college and, you know, training herself up and obviously conflict of interest. So saying that, I've always had a com connection with my community. Does that make sense? Or I've always had a love and care for with my community, our, our atmosphere. Why do we live like this? Why are things harder for poor people than it is for um, working class people or rich people? Do you know what I mean? Why isn't there no support for young people in the way that there should be? Why do they keep cutting back this and that? Do you know what I mean? So I wanted to create a platform or an establishment where we can nurture young ones' creativity or in homing into their creative arts or their creative talents and harness that talent and create a platform to introduce that talent to the nation or to the world, if you get what I mean, because we live by the internet now. So you can reach a wider network of people. So to answer your question, why, we, why I decided to make it a CIC organisation, community interest, community community interest company is because I have a major interest in my community and it's not about the money for me it's about the support the nurturing you know what I mean mentoring someone or training and developing someone that doesn't have that creative skill or they got that creative skill and they want to harness that creative skill and be there for them morally spiritually mentally do you know what I mean academically if I can do you know what I mean? I help you where I can because I'm not. No one is born stupid. Everyone has their field of knowledge or their the their reason of knowing. Do you get what I mean? And all we are put onto this planet is to teach the other and enhance the other and support the other. Whereas there is no support. Where there is no support. So yeah. Why did you use the arts as your main factor for your alternative education? Cause I'm a creative baby. <laughs> That's what I am. I'm an all-round creative. You cannot put me in one genre. Um, people say, oh, focus on one thing. I specialise in film for the world. Do you get what I mean? If the world wants to know what I specialise in, I specialise in film. That's what I studied. That's what I honed in on my, on my craft. And this is the one field where I can harness all of my creative talents in one industry. And for me... Because of the multi multitude of creativity that I'm able, able to produce, I thought having a creative academy in the alternative sector, because there is no creative support in the alternative education. Yes, you could get um, alternative education with plumbing and stuff like that, you know, the, the norm, yeah, which is good. I'm not going to back that down, but some people aren't interested in that. There should be more options available to them. So I created the cash project, which allows that multitude of creativity. And they'll be able to har um, harness their, their craft and be able to market and vendor their products or whatever they produce with ATS Creative Academy. If there's one more thing that you, Justin Jarez, can say to the youth today, what would it be? To home in on your natural creativity, your natural creative talents, your natural born gift, yeah, and focus on it, harness it, yeah, parents, support it, nurture it, find somewhere that they can build on that craft and make a career, career out of it, because at the end of the day, if that's what they are naturally born to do, then get them to do that. They'll have long, more chance of entering that industry if you support it. It doesn't matter if they want to be a plumber, if they good at putting pipes together, when you're buying them their little plastic toys when they're young, home in on that craft. If they're taking down your, your DVD player or your TV and they're putting it back together, make them be an engineer, make them be an electrician. Do you get what I mean? Home in on your young person's craft and young people home in on your natural born gifts. Don't worry about what your friends say. Don't worry about what your friends want to do. It's about you. You are here as individuals to present our natural born gifts onto this world, but we're here and connected to everybody, yeah? 
at the end of the day. So home in on your gifts and parents support that gift. Yeah, if you wake up, you feel like writing, then you write. If you wake up, you feel like making a song, then you make that song. If you wake up and you want to sing, then you sing. If you wake up and you want to polish floors, then you polish floors. It doesn't matter. Yeah, do what you are naturally blessed and gifted to do. Thank you. You're welcome. Sometimes in life, you have to go with the flow of things. Embrace every moment because every moment counts it doesn't matter who you are what your status is where you come from just get up have motivation be consistent build develop that's what we are about that's what we're here for find your purpose everyone has a purpose turn your negatives straight into positives for it's all a learning curve life is about being being expressive if not in an emotional manner, then through art, through design, through scripture, through stories. That's what our artistic mind does. We express our feelings in an artistic manner. We find ourselves in our artistic form. And through our artistic form, we get in touch with self, artistic, thinking, soul, ATS, Creative Academy. Mm -hmm.